There's this game I'm making about a little girl who's stuck in this small farming town that is surrounded by impenetrable walls of cornfields. The little girl is the player, and what do you do? What does the girl do in this small town? That is what we're going to talk about in this video. I made a video previously about this game, well, three games that I made, rather. They were all based around the same premise of this little girl stuck in this small town. You should go check it out, but if you haven't, that's okay. Essentially, what happened in that video is that I talked about three games that I made. They were basically three versions of the same game but they didn't go anywhere. If you watched that video and here you are for the second video and looking forward to see what happened with these games, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been over a month, you're probably gonna think, wow, this guy did nothing with this whole month that he had. And you are not wrong. I did not do a whole ton on this game, but I did come up with some things. That is what we're gonna talk about here. I did create some new things in the game too, and I'm gonna show that off as well. I just wanna point out real quick here that there were a lot of proposals to combine all three versions of the game into one game, but I decided that I wanted to keep them separate, and I'm going to start with the first game. One of the most genius suggestions that I got is that I should just sit down and write out my ideas for this game, and just flush the whole thing out. And, uh, yep, uh, yeah, I, I should probably do that. So here is the background story that I came up with for this little game. The little girl that lives in the small farming village is dying. Somehow, she knows that she will only have three days to live. The girl remembers hearing something from a adults about there being some kind of a disease that was infecting the crops of the entire village and everybody in town is slowly starving to death. Maybe the disease doesn't harm the crops per se, but it makes them inedible. It makes it so that there is nothing to eat despite being surrounded by what looks like edible crops such as the corn walls that surround them. Everybody in the village is slowly starving to death. The little girl tries to go about her day and at the beginning of the day she's given a task to complete. She can choose to carry out that task with the item that she is given, or she can wander around and find other ways to use that item. She can get to know the townsfolk. She can explore the map. Once the three days are over, the girl is dead. I had this vision for the game that as the days wore on and as the game progresses, the world around the girl becomes more dark and decrepit, as if the girl had this optimistic view of everything that wasn't real. She was seeing everything as she remembered it or as she wished it was but the reality of the world around her is falling apart and not only in ruins but rotting kind of like how it is in We Happy Few. By the end of the game, right before the little girl dies, she realizes she's been doing all these tasks with a bunch of corpses. Everybody in the village has already starved to death, and now it's her turn. It's almost like she was playing a game with all these dead characters. Is there gonna be some kind of a monster? Is there gonna be some kind of a demon like I talked about in the last video? Maybe. I guess we'll see. So that's my idea for the general story. Now we need to talk about the video game as a video game. There's a couple of rules that I need to set out for this game. First of all, it needs to be small. Yeah, I'm not really getting paid for any of this, and when I say not really, I mean not at all. It also takes a lot of my time. Not that I don't enjoy it, it's just uh, I want to make games, not a game. We just gotta keep it a small game. Let's make cool small games for now. And when I say small, I mean like within an hour of gameplay. This, this is something that has gotta be played pretty quick. I also want this game to have a lot of exploring, a lot of digging, a lot of open-ended things, uh, uh, meaning a lot of open direction you can go. It's not gonna be open world because again, small game. Something that you, you can explore. You know, I, I want it to feel like there are places to go that, that are interesting and new. People to see that are unique. I want exploration exploration to be part of this game. And here's the other idea that I had. I want there to be no inventory in this game. Now, when I first made this game, I didn't implement an inventory because it was just too complicated and I was just starting out. But I've realized that it would be really easy at this point of my development to just look up a dang tutorial about how to make an inventory system. And it would probably work really well. But I thought, you know, not having an inventory system, having this little girl only being able to pick up and hold one item at a time, and it, it might just be the thing that makes this game kind of interesting. There's a lot of games out there that have inventories. Let's see if we can do something different. So this is the question that I have been trying to discover during this hiatus. What can you do in a game, a game that rewards exploration and running around in new areas, where you can only pick up and hold one item at a time? I know I'm not the only person to come up with an idea for a game like this. One of the problems that I foresaw in this open S game is that it runs the risk of having the player pick up one item, go to the place it needs to be used, use the item, and then go back all the way to where the next item is 
pick it up and bring it to the new area of the world going back and forth back and forth nobody really likes that in game so we're not gonna put that in we're gonna we're gonna avoid that at all costs now here's the idea that I came up with when I was younger I heard about a game that people played in the neighborhood this is the kind of game people are running around in the real world this isn't a video game what would happen is there'd be a group of people that would take a small insignificant item such as a pen or a paper clip and they would go to a house and they would knock on the door and when the door was answered they would ask if the person that answered the door would be willing to trade that small insignificant item with something else the person that answered the door could choose any item they just need to find somebody who's willing to trade items with them now i don't remember if one of the rules of the game is that the item that you trade with needs to be of a higher value or like a bigger size or something but i remember hearing stories about people getting some pretty crazy outcomes from this game maybe somebody would start with a pen and then they would end up at the end of the game have like a laptop or something crazy i've never actually played this game myself unfortunately uh, it turns out you need friends i thought that this could be a really cool concept to try to implement into our game here we have this little girl who is the player who is given at the start of the game one item that she can use in different circumstances but to progress through the game she's going to need to find somebody else that will trade that item for another item then that first item that she traded is no longer available through the rest of the game what gets me kind of excited about this idea is that it has some replayability value if you have an item that you have to give up in order to progress to something else get a new item then you might find later on that you could have used that item in a certain situation that you didn't know about having you go and play the game again and finding out what is behind that opportunity that you missed the first time this would also mean that the game would have to be something that you could end the game finish that run very quickly and then start another one to see alternate endings let's talk about the new things i've added in the game since the last video somebody in the comments suggested that i make a well and a task that you have to go draw some water from the well and i thought that was just a class a idea just mm. so i went ahead and made that well and the bucket here they are in the game i can pick up the bucket and if i put the bucket down in the vicinity of the well it will fill up with water and then if i pick up the bucket again you can see there's this little dripping animation the bucket looks like it's full of water I'm probably going to end up changing the way that you fill up the bucket it just seems kind of bland just putting it on the ground next to the well and having it fill up one of the things that i was really eager to get implemented into this game was a dialogue system one of the games that comes to mind when i'm thinking about doing a dialogue screen is pathologic 2. now i love the way that they handled this when you go up to talk to somebody, the screen goes completely black and you get a close-up profile of this person you're talking to. Their face being mostly shadowed. There's nothing really scary going on in this situation. In fact, most of the time, unless the person is talking about something weird in the game, it's not a scary situation at all. But the way that they have this set up is so creepy and uncanny to me, and I love that. It's almost like it was unintentional. Although Pathologic 2 is a horror game, so... Uh, I'm sure I'm offending somebody by saying that it might be unintentional. So I'm going to do something similar in this game. The first interactable character that I wanted to create was a scarecrow. There were scarecrows in the other games too. It's kind of a running theme. The idea that I had for this guy was that the scarecrow could have two corn cobs sticking out of where his eyes should be, almost like they were rammed in there. And then for the mouth, having a half-growing, half-rotting potato that is curled up into a smile. Here's how that was turning out. I didn't really like the the way the potato mouth was going it looked a little bit indiscernible it was a little bit difficult to tell that it was a mouth so i kind of scrapped that and turned it into just a regular stitch on smile when i made the smaller in world version of the scarecrow i i tried to put the corn of the cobs the corn cobs the corn of cobs corn on the cobs on his in his in 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 the the, the he ended up looking too buggy, so I kind of just gave him a normal scarecrow face. Kind of looks cute now, honestly. After the scarecrow, I made a couple of other characters. This is our mother who is bedridden. She's kind of curled up in the blankets in a fetal position. That's what I was hoping it looked like. Honestly, she kind of looks like a worm, which I kind of like. It's kind of it's kind of got that creepy vibe I was hoping for. I wasn't sure if I liked the red bedding, so I made a blue version. And right now in the game, I have the blue version going. You guys tell me which one you like better. This guy, I was thinking the story for him might be that he was a 
farmhand. He was working with the family to help them on their farm. And then this guy, he's a little bit of an odd looking one. He's sitting on a swing, which I have for a reason that I don't quite want to divulge here. Not just yet. This weird looking guy on the swing isn't in the game, but the other ones are. Let's check that out. Inside the house, you can go in and see that the mother is there on the bed. I added a little bit of a breathing animation, which could be improved. You can talk to her as well, and I added a little bit of a dialogue clip for her. Well, here's a little thing that I added that was kind of cool. If you walk behind a building that would normally obstruct your view of the player, it will go invisible so that you can see where you are and what you're doing. Here's the farmhand in game. I have him leaning up against the well, but I might change his position later on. I don't have any dialogue written for him, but here's his dialogue screen. I think it turned out pretty well. And here's a little graveyard. For the concept of this game to work, it's going to need a lot more characters, and it's going to need a lot more buildings. And for this part, I'm going to need to take you down a bit of a tangent. There was a piece of art that I had created for one of the three games that I forgot all about, and I wanted to show you because I took some inspiration from that game, the second game, and I put it into this game. Here's this tile set that I had made for the second version. Again, if this doesn't make any sense to you, you should probably go watch the first video I made about this. I had put together these models of these houses, and I put this house into the game, into the yellow game. Here it is with color and in the game. I think it looks pretty cool. Maybe a little bit too bright? I don't have anything on the inside of this house. You can't even go in the door. Another quick tangent that I forgot to mention in the last video, I made a monster for the second version of the game. Something similar to what I talked about in the third version. We have this monster that is hollowing out somebody's body from the back. The monster just kind of crawls in and out of this skin. I have an animation that I made for this. It's not a very good one. If I were to continue on with this game, I would definitely polish this up. Am I going to put a version of this monster into the game we're talking about now? The yellow game? Maybe. If you found any of this interesting, subscribe if you haven't already. And I just want to say to all the people who left comments in the last video, thank you. You guys are awesome.